that means when this cell is connected across the external resistance okay then the cell drives the charges along this circuit so the work done in driving the charges along the circuit is called as the emf its si unit is volt so 1 volt equal to 1 joule per coulomb same as that of the potential and potential difference when the current is flowing here in the inside this electrolyte also this electrolyte and electrodes they offer opposition to the charges flow of charges this opposition is called as the internal resistance of a cell therefore the opposition offered to the flow of charges by the electrolyte is called as the internal resistance of the cell this internal resistance has very small value a freshly prepared cell has low internal resistance when you go on using it its internal resistance goes on increasing continuously because various reactions are ha taking place inside the cell the cell is also called as the source of emf it is the seat of emf because of that only current flows through the circuit the symbol for cell and along with the internal resistance is usually written in this way cell and one small resistance so this combination or this type of representation is usually called as a cell therefore if i write 6 volt and 1 ohm here it means this cell has internal resistance of 1 ohm and it offers it it provides a potential difference of 6 volt you can also write like this 6 volt 1 ohm it is not necessary that this resistance is always connected or represented along with this negative terminal of the battery so this is a circuit symbol of a cell now using this i would like to derive a simple circuit equation and according to that simple circuit equation what i do here i will take one cell this resistance represents the internal resistance this is emf i connect this across the external resistance r okay now a current flows through it current now i would like to know the equation for the current i begin with the basics current is equal to the total emf upon the total resistance total emf upon total resistance so how much is the total emf here it is e how much is the total resistance of the circuit it is the effective resistance of internal resistance r and external resistance capital r since these are connected in series therefore i equal to e upon r plus r this equation usually called as the circuit equation or equation for the current to the simple circuit now use that equation and cross multiply after cross multiplication i will be getting e equal to i r plus i into r this i into capital r this is actually the potential drop or potential difference across the external resistance and its a symbol is v so e equal to v plus i into r or else or else here v equal to e minus i into r v equal to e minus i into r now by using this equation let us try to differentiate between this emf e and this potential difference v in this equation if i equal to 0 i equal to 0 what do you mean by i equal to 0 here you are not at all drawing any current from the circuit that means if i connect one switch here this switch is open or okay switch i represent like this so when the switch is open this is called as a open circuit so in case of open circuit when i equal to 0 then v will be equal to e in the second case if 
I is not equal to 0. That means in case of a closed circuit, if the circuit is closed or when the plug is inserted there, like here it is open circuit, then what happens? V and E if I take, then I get the answer that V is okay, no, less than E. The significance of these two are when no current drawn from the cell, then V equal to E. The name of the V is terminal potential difference. That means the terminal potential difference across the cell is equal to its EMF. But when the current is drawn, then uh, this terminal potential difference gets reduced. It means if I take a cell here whose EMF is 1.5 volt, I am not at all drawing the current from that cell. That means here one resistor is connected, but the switch is off. So in that case, if I use the voltmeter to measure the potential difference, then I get the reading as 1.5. 5 volts. When the circuit is completed, then the current starts flowing through the resistor. Now in this case, if I measure the potential difference there across the terminals of the battery, I do not get the value of 1.5 volt. It is less than that. It may be 1.3, 1.2. Therefore, we have explained, we have studied the relation between V and E with the help of this circuit equation. Now again from this equation we can write the equation for the internal resistance of the cell. We can do this uh, in the laboratory as a practical R equal to uh, after rearranging the terms okay after rearranging the terms R equal to E by V minus 1 E by V minus 1 into R okay no? we can verify this later. Now let us see what happens if the distance between the electrodes are changed, nature of the electrolyte is changed and the electrodes are changed. That means on what factors the value of this R internal resistance changes. In that cell as you saw earlier, if the electrodes are placed very close to each other, very close to each other, then the distance is very less. Then the charges have to travel lesser distance. So in that case, as the distance is decreasing less, internal, resi internal resistance also decreases. What happens if the area of the electrodes are increased, a thick electrodes are used. So as area increases, more and more number of reactions takes place, as a result of that internal resistance decreases. If the electrodes are immersed completely, completely inside the electrolyte, in that case also internal resistance decreases. It is a two mark question. What are the various factors which affect the internal resistance of a cell? So these things you have to write. Distance between the electrodes, nature of the electrolyte and also how much portion of the electrodes are immersed actually inside the electrolyte. So these are the factors which affect the internal resistance of the cell. Hope you have understood these things. It is a very simple concept. Now let me explain about what happens when the cells are connected in series combination, when the cells are connected in the parallel combination. So cells in series and uh, parallel. First I begin with the cells in series combination. So I will be considering n number of cells which are having same value of EMF and same value of internal resistance E and R each. They are connected in series like this. And this combination is again connected across external resistance R. Here also I would like to derive the equation for the current. Current is how much? So the current equal to as I told you earlier also total EMF upon the total resistance. Let me write the equation for the total EMF. So in series combination the total EMF will be equal to N times E. The total resistance, this is equal to the total internal resistance plus external resistance. Since the cells are connected in series, therefore, 
the internal resistance becomes total internal resistance becomes nr so nr plus capital r so these two values i will substitute here as a result of that i get the equation i equal to ne upon r plus nr so this is the equation for the resultant current when the cells are connected in series combination the special cases the case number 1 first case if r is greater than nr very much greater than nr you can say it means that when the external resistance of the circuit is very very large as compared to the total internal resistance then then this nr can be neglected you can neglect this nr in the denominator so use this equation again in that case i equal to n times e by r n e by r so n times e by r in the second case i'll take the reverse case now if capital r is very much less than nr total internal resistance then i can neglect capital r r can be neglected so if r is neglected then again from this equation this r is neglected therefore nn gets cancelled so i get e upon r now you compare these two equation this equation and this equation you can see that in this first case when the external resistance is very very large then the current is n times the current flowing through the external resistance it means here current is more in the second case current is less therefore to get maximum current more current with the help of combination of cells provided external resistance is very much greater than the internal resistance then you must connect the cells in series therefore this cells in series is giving you the answer and that answer is i is more if external resistance is more than the internal resistance to get maximum current connect like this now what i do i will connect these cells in the in the parallel combination so first cell this is the second cell and this will be the third cell like that n number of cells i can use so all these n number of cells they are connected in parallel and this combination is again connected across the external resistance like this here okay this is external resistance r this is e this is r and all the cells are having same value of emf and okay now now in this case let us try to derive similar type of equations okay now so the total current total current will be equal to total emf total emf now becomes e in parallel combination total emf is remaining same e which is across the single one whereas in the series combination it is the sum of all these individual emfs divided by the total resistance total resistance is the sum of external resistance and internal resistance external resistance already i have written capital r now i would like to write the internal resistance total internal resistance now all these internal resistance are they are connected in parallel combination therefore 1 by rp equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 and so on up to 1 by rn that means here it is n by r okay now since all are having the same value of internal resistance though, so it is n by r but i want this rp so it is r by r by n so here r upon n i wrote so this is the equation here now same cases we'll discuss in the first case if capital r is very much greater than r by n okay here means if the external resistance is more so then this r by n is neglected so i get i equal to e upon r in the second case if capital r is very much less than r by n uh, then i will be equal to n times e by r because here capital r is neglected so in the parallel combination here the cells are connected in parallel i am writing this heading here in the parallel combination in the second case the current is more as compared to the first case therefore to get the maximum current in the parallel combination you have to connect these cells in parallel only if external resistance very much less than the total internal resistance 
look at the diagram now, circuit diagram. In this circuit diagram, resistors P, Q, R and S, they are connected as shown in this figure. And across these two points B and D, we have connected one galvanometer. And across these two ends A and C, one battery has been connected along with the plug key. This type of circuits, they are simply called as electrical networks, where current has more than one path. There are certain closed paths in it. There are certain points which are called as the junctions. Now, in such type of circuits, if we want to find out how much is current flowing through the branch AD, how much is the current flowing through the branch this AB, likewise, we can find out the current through each and every branch. In similar way, if you want to find out the potential difference between D and C, B and C, or across any two points, what actually is the method? Simple ohms law can't be used here because it is a mixed combination of resistors. In such cases, to solve our problems, okay, to find out the current sign potential differences, we have got two laws which are stated by given by the Kirchhoff. They are called as the Kirchhoff laws. According to the first Kirchhoff law, if you consider the junction in this electrical network, like the point A is a junction, point B is also a junction. A junction is that point where you have two or more than two paths of current. Means many incoming currents, many outgoing currents. So a point offers two or more than two paths. After that, such type of point is called as a junction. So at junction A, how many currents are reaching there? If you want to understand, we will distribute the currents in various arms now. Current I starts from this cell or battery. It reaches the point A. When it reaches the point A, it gets branched. Assume that I1 is current which is flowing through the resistor P, then the remaining current which is I minus I1, it will be flowing through this resistor R. Similarly, when current I1 reaches the junction B, then again it gets branched into two. Ig is the current which is flowing through the galvanometer. Remaining current is I1 minus Ig which is flowing through the resistor Q. Likewise, in this diagram I have mentioned the currents which are flowing through the various branches. Now, if I want to find out the relation between those, first of all, I will consider junction A. You know, at the point which is called as a junction, so at a junction A in that network, electrical network, according to the Kirchhoff first 